Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to another edition of the New Black Leadership Coalition here live in the studios of Intellectual Radio. My name is Gregory Sang, the host of the show and one of the co-founders of the New Black Leadership. I am so blessed, so honored, and really just lucky as they come to once again have this golden, golden opportunity to come before you all over these precious airways that we take very, very serious. And as you know, the New Black Leadership have uh, many, many co-founders from various organizations, uh, organizers, street activists, professors, uh, you name it, businessmen, and et cetera. And so we are very thankful to all of the uh, co-founders and all of those that support the new black leadership. So this evening, we are very, very uh, honored. We are very, very thankful that we have finally in the studio yes. um, a young brother that I have uh, the utmost respect for, uh, Representative LaShawn K. Ford. This brother is... Um, uh, real estate broker, state rep, mayoral candidate, but most importantly, he is a father of a young daughter. Uh, I think her name is Tia. That's right. Uh, the brother has a daughter named Tia, and he has a, a body of work that he has uh, been involved with downstate. And right now, I mean, it's interesting that um, he is running to become the mayor of the city of Chicago. So we're going to we're going to talk to this brother and got a lot of questions and I'm sure he have a lot of things that he would like to share with you all. But you know, before we get started, brother LaShawn, thank you so very much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. I mean, I got to tell you, I am in awe of the studio. So if your listeners haven't had a chance to be in this studio, this is what it's all about. I mean, to have this type of apparatus in place, we always talk about blacks having a network where we could get our message out. Well, this right. is it. This is amazing. Excellent. This Earl Winfrey, this this brother right here, the producer, the owner, president, the CEO of Intellectual Radio. We are very, very privileged to have him with us this evening. Yeah, it's a great studio. We've uh, been with Intellectual Radio, uh, the new black leadership, for quite some time. I can't count the years, but we are very gracious that this brother uh, has blessed us to have a show here uh, in this great studio. You know, I wanted to say this real quick. I typically do a little commentary. Mm -hmm. And so did Dave, just a little two-minute commentary about they. You know, you always hear what they are not doing right. for us. And this is going to fit right into this is going to fit right into the conversation with you what they because when you hear the word who is the they who is the they they not doing this they not doing that because i want to talk about the we yes you know as a community of people they gonna do what they supposed to do unfortunately we are not doing what we need to do because they have an agenda they basically have a mission. They have some things that they feel are more important to them. And so we, as people, poor people, humanity, those mm -hmm. that are locked out, uh, what are we going to do? And so the new black leadership has been promoting, has been pushing ha aggressively the whole idea of unity, mm -hmm. action oriented to see the needle move, brother. And so um, I wanted to just say, we got to deal with we. Mm -hmm. So this evening, my conversation is going to be around they, and we'll call out who they are and then what we need to do. So uh, it's not an accident. And everybody know that this brother is running for mayor. But before we get into that, brother LaShawn, I mentioned a body of work. Uh, it appears to me, not because you 
uh, have a degree from Loyola, but checking you out, you probably one of the most brightest young men. I mean, I know all praise is due mm -hmm. to the creator and your parents and people, but you're a very sharp brother. I was listening to another show that she was on and I heard you and I'm going to come back to that mm -hmm. about your relationships with speaker. Yes. Mike Maddock and yeah. your relationship with Ed Burke. Right. I'm going to come back to that because alliances are fine as long as when people get into the room that you still speak truth to power and you make sure whatever deals are going on, whatever that black people are getting more out of it, not just a little crumbs or something to make us happy. Right. And then we, they still rule the world, you know? So I'm going to talk about that. And I want to address some things as the black caucus mm -hmm. uh, concern. And, and, and then uh, the city hall mm -hmm. uh, world that's a little different from downstate, but nevertheless, uh, it's political uh, offices that determines policy, that determine grants, that determine contracts, right. that determine uh, certain services that people are absolutely concerned about in the city and in the state. It's a big deal right now. I don't think it's a bigger deal than people running for mayor. So I got a question out the gate for you. Why the hell would you want to be the mayor of Chicago? Do you really want to be the mayor? Or is this symbolic to be at the table because you have a voice mm -hmm. and you say things that are somewhat unpopular, right? you know, in terms of your work with the prison, mm -hmm. your work with, you know, uh, brothers. I, don't, I hate to use the word ex offenders, right. but everybody can relate to that. You dig. And then don't let me forget how you not so much escape because God was with you <laughs> right. when it came to this unchecked group of people that they icon is corrupt J. Edgar Hoover. Right. The FBI. You dig who like uh, the other brother um, uh, um, that around the same time he had to Derek Derek yeah. Smith. Yeah. So. I don't they, I don't give them any credibility. I wouldn't give a damn what they had to say about deals you was making while they run scot free. I right. mean, what foolishness. Mm -hmm. then, then we put that garbage on our people. But as a black man that's downstate right mm -hmm. now that have do you you have senior uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, uh um what are they seniority? Call seniority, yes. right? So why would you why do you want to be the man? Well, I mean, the mayor of the city of Chicago impacts black people in a strong way. The mayor impacts public policy in Springfield. So the seniority that I have in Springfield will move right to City Hall. So the relationships that I have with the members in Springfield, we could pass laws in um, Springfield to help Chicago. Um, we can uh, make sure that we use our relationships with Speaker Madigan. I mean, Speaker Madigan is only going to be as powerful and stingy with the resources as we allow him. Right now, we have to get someone else at that table other than the normal people like Tony Pretwinkle, Bill Daly. They are not going to allow a whole new apparatus of people to come in and get the contracts that we have not Why been able to they? get. Why? Because they don't. Tony Pretwinkle don't do it now. You're a Democrat. She's a Democrat. I beat the she Democratic Party to get where I'm at. I use my own. So you're resource. not a machine. I'm politician. not not at all. I've never been supported by the machine. And but um, Michael Madigan supports you. He is the machine. Well, well, he supports me when it's beneficial to him. Mm. I'm no talk about that. that. Yeah, See, because that's where I want to go. Right. That's because politicians have a strange bedfellow. Right. So some alliances, if it's to benefit our people, but go ahead into that. You know, he represents. He supports uh, members, but it's ultimately about Speaker Madigan, and so we have to be about our people. Madigan's district is going to be taken care of. So if I'm the mayor of the city, 
Madigan now needs me to negotiate with. Right now, it's kind of difficult being one member out of 118. He's the speaker. He's elected and he's in charge of right, down right. state. But when you have a mayor that can um, help negotiate things between the governor and the speaker and Cook County board president and um, Cook County sheriff, I mean, we have to have someone at that table. Right now, we don't have anyone at the table that's going to speak up for blacks, speak up for the people that's left out. I mean, look how long blacks and women and minorities have been left out, especially black people. You know, the yes. city of Chicago is struggling because it's leaving people behind. So knowing how that stuff works, resources, who gets what? And you mentioned, let me, let me use the word interest. Right. So in the interest of your district, mm -hmm. what is the interest that you uh, as a, a, a senior politician now? Because mm -hmm. I think it was 2007. That's right. That's you know, you started your in. career. What's the interest of your district and what is your district made out of far as poor people, black people? Yeah. So the district is pretty diverse. It's majority minority. And, um, and when you say minority, that would be what, majority black, black, but people, we, okay. we do have um, um, brown also because the district is the Austin community. We have Berwyn, LaGrange, LaGrange Park, okay. North Riverside, um, Western Springs, Forest Park and parts of um, Brookfield. Okay. So it's a really diverse district. But what it tells me is that we have the ability to work with all communities in the city of Chicago. There are 77 communities. And the eighth district that I represent reflects the 77 communities. So when people want to know if you could represent all of the 77 communities, that means the Latino communities. Well, I have when they want to know if you could represent the Caucasian communities where well, I have. And so that's what my district entails, the ability to it shows that I could work with all communities. Yeah. But when it comes to redistributing the wealth, I mean, that's when, good. I like when you that. think about. Uh, we live in a capitalistic society. So just keeping it real, keeping it real. We say Madigan, Ed Burke, whoever's in that seat, because I know when Harold Washington uh, was running, when he first ran, uh, I was working at Independence Bank of Chicago. Mm -hmm. They benefited. Black people benefited from him being in office. Matter of fact, the foreign currency that First National Bank always got that contract. Mm -hmm. When Harold Washington got in office, he told First National Bank, in order for you to continue, even though you're a big bank, you got to go in partnership with Independence Bank. Independence Bank eventually took over that operation. But Harold made sure black people were involved in every single crane almost that went up in Chicago. That I mean, that's going to happen automatically with a um, administration, a Ford administration, my administration. It's going to be obvious that we're going to make sure black people become millionaires like they were becoming when Harold was um, in, in office. When we do that, you automatically reduce the unemployment rate for blacks, because when you empower small businesses, they hire more people. The city of Chicago has so many departments. We have the CHA, tons of contracts opportunities. Um, Chicago Public School, contract opportunities. Uh, CDOT, opportunities. I mean, the list goes on and on where contracts could be led to small businesses. But what's been happening now, they've been going to the cronies. I mean, we have to open it up, like you said. So when you say cronies, are these people that openly or secretly or just behind and secretly is the same thing behind closed doors, the same thing that supports these folks in terms of their campaign yeah. and their parties or whatever. And they make sure they give money back to them or they continue to get contract. Uh, more, a real, real uh, serious to me. I think it's pretty serious, even though I believe, uh, as Minister Farrakhan has said very wisely, politics 
without economics is symbol without substance. Right. But when I look at uh, the black woman, there's a black woman running and she challenges black women or women on this whole petition thing, signature. Oh, then yeah. the black men yeah. challenging the black men uh -huh. on the signature. Will we be able to get back together? We ain't been together, really, but will we? For the sake of the black community, if when we see how this thing is going, even though the posters and, and, and the big business people, they tend to control the narrative in the paper and somebody who just jumped in the race, they get more yeah. attention than the folks who've yeah. been involved. Well, you know, I think that when you look at the person that's challenging the black man in the race. That person is not qualified. Willie Wilson is not qualified to be the mayor of the city of Chicago. And he's a fraud and he's a fake. I mean, he's an evil man. Willie Wilson? That's right. Wow. And I, and I don't But mean, But uh, I wanted those. Let's stop right there. I'm shocked that you said he was a fraud. He's a fraud but, and, and he's, a fake. And, and, and he's an evil man. And you cannot What, what makes him a fake? Because I don't think that his, his work... He, he would like to pretend that his work is for the good of people, but it's his work is for it's all political. I've seen him in action. I've asked him. So as, stop at the political. Is he trying to in your in your estimation? He's trying when you say it's all political for who It's for him to try to become mayor. I mean, I don't have to give out hundreds of dollars. What I've done is change lives as a legislator. The things that I have done has impacted the lives of people. You will hear candidates talk about what they're going to do. Uh -huh. But I have to tell you what I've done. It's totally different. And you have to look at a person's work to know exactly what you can expect. It's no different than getting in a relationship and getting engaged. You know, you you date. And you find out who this person is, you get engaged and you get married mm -hmm. because you have you have this certain belief that this person could do something that that's magical with you. Well, there is nothing that we could see magical about what Willie Wilson could do for the city of Chicago. So, Willie, anybody else you feel? I feel the about, same way about Tony Pretwinkle. What about Bill her? Daly? Is they fraud? The, you know, Tony Pretwinkle is who she is. She's the person that's going to tax you to death. And she's going to tax you and tax you and tax you. There's no tax that she's ever seen that she wouldn't impose on the working families. So I don't think you and Willie Wilson are going to be working together. I don't think I would support Willie Wilson for anything. What but, about but Tony Pratt? I would buy Willie Wilson a ticket out of Chicago. Wow. What about uh, the other candidates? Who do you have? If you Bill if, Daly, do we really black, the black ones. Okay. Well, well, white well, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna just attack the blacks. I attack everybody that's right. in this race to tell you why I know that I'm the So best what person. about Bill Daly? Bill Daly, do we really want to go back to the Daly era where blacks were really shut out and this city was controlled by a small group of people? We will never ever get our chance. You know, it's not just blacks that's ever, never going to get a chance. It's the working families in the city of Chicago that will never, ever get a chance if we continue to allow them to use us to enrich themselves and their friends. This is our chance to tear down the corruption in the city of Chicago and to take the city back for everyday working families. So did, did something happen between you and Willie Wilson <laughs> where you feel so strong in terms of him being a fraud, yeah. a fake, yeah. and uh, I've gotten to know him better and evil. But when you said evil, evil, you said so a man that passes out yeah, that's money. A, that's a you know I don't I, I think that I, I watch him and I've seen his work and I've seen his actions and I've seen his words and I think that he's a evil you man. said that very very passionate bro yeah, yeah. as though it, it, it was really personal but i think people one thing i respect is how people really really feel we can agree to disagree right. but ain't no use for people faking how right. they feel now can that be reconciled well that that that's down the road but now going back to 
the Black Caucus. Right. There have been black people who have felt the Black Caucus in Springfield has not been strong, that like the one here in the city, that you all don't work together in terms of, of challenging and, and confronting Michael Madigan. Well, I mean, you you do what you do. I got to tell you what I've done. I, I don't know what kind of challenge uh, people expect out of the Black Caucus. The Black Caucus is the minority caucus in uh -huh. Springfield. So there's only so much you could do when you are the minority caucus. Whites are the majority caucus. So the question is, what are we asked to do as to challenge Mike Madigan? I mean, what what do we? Well, so when something comes up on the floor. And there's certain legislations mm -hmm. that uh, impact black folks. Right. Do black folks stick together regardless of their relationships with color children or with this yeah. one, with that one? Do we just say, oh, no, hell no. You know, I think the one the one time that I think that blacks really get something out of a situation and another group got something and that was when the latino caucus got 95 million dollars for schools the black caucus didn't get money to match that but did y'all vote on it and we voted on it right did, so did the black folks the black everybody vote? voted for it it, mm -hmm. it was an overwhelming no one everyone voted for it so it's not a why but because why? i mean you don't you don't hold one group back because you, you know right 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 what we need to do as a caucus and not just as a caucus, but as a community, is come together and have some demands. How you think they, they would have supported us? Oh yeah, we because the only reason why the Latino caucus got ninety five million dollars that year was because they were in Springfield lobbying for that whole year, mm -hmm. and they had bus loads and bus loads and bus loads of people coming down. We have to get black people and people that's um, you know left out to be engaged in government. You know, there's nothing happens in government not unless you make it happen. I mean, when you think about the civil rights movement, it we were not allowed to sit at the lunch counter because, you know, it happened because God said, let us sit at the lunch counter. We fought for it and God blessed it. You know, we. The only problem I got with that was we stopped sitting at our own right. counter and you stopped know? thinking about what we need to do for ourselves. Do you think, do you think. Black people, poor people, minorities are nickel and dime when it comes to taxes and fees and penalties. Do you That's think the problem with the city of Chicago. The city of Chicago is not a friend of black people. We are under attack. We are under assault by the city of Chicago's government. I mean, we have the boot, the red light cameras the parking tickets, the city building code violations where people are losing their properties, um, you you name it. I mean, police brutality. We have to make sure that we shut down the new, um, the, the old ways of Chicago and bring um, a new way of government govern, governing into the city of Chicago. You have a lot of experience as a broker. Yes. A real estate broker. When you look at the real estate and the fleeing population of black people leaving the city what could you do to fix this whole thing when it comes to housing yeah and, you know just poor people being able to thrive or survive in a a hostile environment well the best way to fix and and increase population is to improve the school system you have to make sure that families know that they have a place where they can raise their kids and get them the best education. As a real estate broker, you said it, I have the experience. The first thing that families want to know is where can I send my kids to school? So when you go into the most uh, troubled communities, the answer is we don't know. So the best thing that we could do is to make sure that every community has high quality early childhood education elementary through high school when we do that the communities grow in population yeah i tend to uh agree but then a building a nice building is not a good school right a good school, high quality though. uh uh individuals that love what they're doing and i think that's a sociological uh conversation it's psychological but 
later on one day we'll talk about that because me being involved for years with the school i growing up in the robert taylor homes i knew that there were teachers who were from that community the preacher was from that community the policeman was from that community and it was a community effort as it related to teaching and training as it related to mentoring. Mm -hmm. So now everybody comes into the community and unfortunately people that don't look like us are working in the community, sitting at the fire uh, house. They sitting on cranes or working on cranes. It's that's nuts. You know, what that is, I mean, there's nothing crazier than a community that's unemployed with all these problems, and you see a white man on the damn crane, a uh, white guys or Latinos riding around in a police car, and you see uh, white teachers, white principals, right? Yeah, you know, and I mean, white people even doing the damn uh, 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 landscaping. Some is gravely wrong with that. See, they run, they oppress our communities. You have vacant and abandoned properties and vacant lots on the south and west sides of Chicago. You use that word they. You know, they. Now, who is the they? The they is everyone but those that's living in that community. Thank you. And so, you know, when you look at Lincoln Park, when you look at Wrigleyville, when you look at all these places where they get all that TIF money, those communities are developed and they're vibrant because the city has invested in those communities. The city has failed to invest on the south and west sides of Chicago. So quite naturally, families are going to leave because when you don't invest in a certain community, the the, the value goes down. TIF, talk about that. Yes, yeah, so TIFs are monies that's used to develop communities and create jobs. Right. But you don't see the TIF dollars being implemented in Austin, Inglewood, uh, Roseland, the way they are instituted in the central part of downtown. Okay. A third of the TIF money has been spent in the central region of Chicago, and that's downtown. That's billion a billion dollars that has been um, invested down there. So when you have that type of investment, you know things have improved. Just think about it. You were born Robert Taylor. I was born in Cabrini. Right now, we could not afford to rent in the Cabrini area. Oh, no. And no, so how no. did it happen? It didn't happen because the residents from over there did it. The city got public private relationships and they developed that community and that's how it became better. So the same thing could happen on the South and West sides of Chicago if the city has the will to do it. So in our community, unfortunately, we have a group of elitists that really don't give a damn about the poor. It's just a fact. So that didn't bother them. And those folks, our people that was living in the Cabrini Greens right after you, because it was a whole different generation. The poverty situation was different than when it was when I was living in the Robert Taylor home. Whole different mindset. My mom, your mom, or right. dad, it was it was really a temporary place. Right. And then everybody had to go to school and it was about not having second generations living in those places. But our people were vulnerable. Right. And nobody fought for them in the city nor the state. And they watched this stuff go down. Mm -hmm. They watched it. Daly was in office, right? Right. I mean, Daly's daddy built the um, projects and, and uh, son tore them down. You With know. the help of some black representatives. Yeah, I would think so. I, um, oh, there was plenty of them sitting there. Yeah. Plenty of them. So that's my point is, uh, you you sound like a fighter. Oh, yeah, I'm a fighter. I was born to fight. It's obvious that I've had to fight all my life. But I do mean, you go along to get along? Oh, absolutely not. If that's the case, you know, I wouldn't be running for mayor right now because... You know, they, they they would tell you they would tell me and they, you know, you should wait your turn. Have you ever said something like you said regarding Willie Wilson? You ever said that like that about a white man? 
I'll say it about any white man that deserved to be that it should be said. You but, think but any Willie white Wilson, man? Willie Wilson uh, has. Evil. I got. Of course, I'm gonna tell you right now. Willie Wilson has directly attacked me and my family. So I oh, have really? to tell you that. And what? It, well, how did that happen? And what, mean, what happened? Well, I mean, through this process. Okay. And so I'm very disappointed that he would do that. Supposedly but talk about a man that. of but God. talk about that. You know, just that there's been attack. You know. Okay. And not not physically. No, yeah, but I through understand. this process, and it's been unnecessary. That's why I said. Well, that, what brought that about, though? Sean? Because he he wants to be the only black man in the race. So it's one thing to be to play politics and to do politics, but when you want to take it personal, that's disappointing. And so I I just have to say that that that. So I I don't mind going through the process, but there, it makes no sense for two black men to. Um, to attack one another's family. So you know that that's going to be exploited, you know, in terms of our uh, um, disunity. Well, and I, I mean, you know, it's yeah. always been exploited. Right. But I think uh, it could help. And you say, how could that help? Well, when you know, as you said, when it comes to relationships, mm -hmm. how somebody really feels, right. then you have an opportunity to reconcile. But through that, there's a thing called atonement. Right. And you got to first acknowledge that you've wronged an individual. Yeah. And I don't think, you know, we should uh, say things to hurt each other and definitely don't bring the family That's right. involved with this stuff because at the end of the day, if somebody else, hypothetically, mm -hmm. was to get in that office, what happens to the black community? Right. Do we really lose because they say those Negroes don't like each other? Those Negroes don't like each other. Those, those Negroes don't like themselves. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Right. Well, you say it when I say that about a white person. I mean, Mike Madigan does not have the best interest of the black community. Is he I, evil? I mean, I would think that he's evil if he's not um, making things and, you know, I've been there for 12 years. I've been trying to get a high school in the Austin community, you know, and um, there's been a lot of things that I think that a, a strong Christian person would do to make sure that you see some equity in 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 the state. So and who, so if who you, was the who's the Christian you talking about? I, I said I'm the Christian. Oh, oh, you know, I was just trying to <laughs> but I'm not challenging people. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really challenging folks um what, what they but well, you're you know, talking about yourself. Right. But I'm saying you asked about Mike Madigan. And so I, I just have to say that, you know, if, if he's evil. You but know. I like what you just said, LaShawn. I mean, this is the truth. So you see yourself as a servant oh, when you yes. bring up Christianity or be it Islam or person that believe in higher power, you believe you're there. Oh, yes. you're there not just to make money and to get the perks and go oh. to the urban league. No, I don't even do gala those. to go to the push no nope. rainbow, whatever, and go to the so and so. You walk around, I'm representative. Hey, I don't so think you so. see me at those. No, we haven't seen each other. Right. <laughs> no, I, you know, that's not what it's about for me. And and but no, I'm talking about a fraud. Right. But I don't I don't you know, people could do what they want. But it is for me serving the people. OK, you know, I, I started out going to be in, in a seminary. I was going to be a priest. Then I became a, a teacher. And well, uh, we need some some some. Uh, we need um, some married priests. Yeah, we need some priests that. Don't like little boys. That's why I say we need some married need priests. Some, yeah, we need some married priests, yeah. and not just marriage for the symbol, right? But they love women. That's right, and and, and that's the, the whole idea. Because marriage can be a front. You know, a lot of people do things mm -hmm. customarily, mm -hmm. but in their heart, they got a whole different agenda, right? And reasons to be in that hood called priest. That's right. So so, but going back to the servant part, um. Right now, what you're doing, what's one of the major accomplishments that you feel you've made that black people, poor people have benefited from? Well, you know, there are over a um, uh, hundred million people with some form of a criminal record in the country. In Illinois, there are millions of people with some form of a criminal record. So I would think that one of the best bills that I passed was the ability to get your record sealed. 
if you have had a felony on your record because of the work that I've done in Illinois, a felony, you could get it sealed off your record and you could start all over. That's huge. I've done an African-American employment plan. Um, I've done, um, I lowered the compulsory age for um, students going to school in Illinois. It used to be seven. Now you have to start school at six. I made it easier for people to um, take the HIV and AIDS test. It used to be you have to go into a uh, doctor's office or you go take a test somewhere and they ask you questions about your risk factors. If you ever had sex, if you're a male, have you ever had sex with another male? Are you an IV drug user? Are you this? Are you that? Now, because of the work that I've done, they don't ask you those questions. It's a part of the routine test. And because of that, we have been able to uh, move more people into treatment and now they're undetectable. You know, you, you can live with AIDS now, like you know, like never before, and you could be undetectable. You don't transmit it like you used to. So that's huge. So, so you've got you've given dignity to dignity to that process. Yes. And, and when you mentioned about the the seal record thing, you know, the first thing came to my mind was credit. Oh, you yes. know, it's like bankrupt. Yes. yes. Person can start over, over again. The system is designed to crush the poor. You know, and that's why we have to have the right person in office. You look at everyone from the top to the bottom of this ticket and you ask yourself, what have they done? What is their track record? And if we are honest with the work that people have done, I'm the only one that people will vote for. If they give me a fair shot and look at my record and look at my moral compass, I'm the one to help um, shape the new future of Chicago. So I know you are definitely a family man. Yes. And um, that's that's huge because you want the very best for yours. You know, I I, I mean, when it comes to daughters and et cetera, I understand. Or in son. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mentioned those accomplishments. What would be the number one challenge when you look at the culture? And politics, be it city or state government, what is the number one challenge to change the way business as usual, the status quo in Chicago that will make you stand out from all of the rest of those that's running for office? The number one challenge in the campaign or once I win the election? Yeah, both. I think the number one challenge during the campaign is um, waking up the people that have been, you know, tired of the same old process and, and have given up on government. That's the number one challenge. The second challenge is people just saying, I'm going to break away from this, these chains of bondage, and I'm going to try something new. And I think that we're going to be ready to do that in 2019. Willie Wilson said, you ain't got no money. Get that's out. That's right. Race. That's what that's what I mean. They're totally attacking me and my family and black. Do men. you have do you have money to run this campaign? I'm, yeah, of course. I wouldn't be in it. You know, we have we will run a competitive race. And it's so disrespectful for a black man to to attack other black men about what they have and what they don't have. I, I, I personally it is, um, this is not about you or Willie. This is really about uh, a process that I think is so corrupt mm -hmm. that you should not have to have money in a so-called democracy, democracy. Yes. to run for a damn office. That's right. So that means you got to pay. That's what you almost got to buy your way into office so you can get a commercial, Man. so you can have visibility. Yeah. But no, so people, it's almost like showing up to court, even though you didn't read the same book the lawyer read. The judge wants you to have to you. a damn lawyer right, right. to make sure you keep the money in the corrupt family. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the stuff is so obvious. Yeah. Now you see what I mean to, to tell young men that's looking at Jamal Green, looking at other people that's running for office that you need to sit down if you don't have any money. So what, I mean, here we are telling people every day you should aspire to run for office. And then you have someone that God has blessed to have millions of dollars 
to tell people you need to sit down and you need to shut up because you don't have money. I got the money. I'm the king. That's not right. I think absolutely if you feel strongly about somebody, you, you know, people put up money, people endorse them and, and people put their money behind those. What what endorsement have you? I know recently uh, Tony Pretwinkle got a couple <laughs> of unions or something. Yeah, she got the teachers us, union. But, yeah, so uh, what group? are endorsing you. I know the grassroots you know, I, you know, the activists, I, I'm not they sure. all are with you. Yeah. Even though some of them, I had to spank a few of them. Y'all know who I'm talking about because I don't like us to fall out because some of them that are listening, they are with Willie Wilson. Yeah, they are some of them are be. with uh, uh, one of our members, co-founders, uh, Doc Walls. Yeah, he's not know, running. No, yeah, I know, but he when he, he was running. Yeah. So in the very early stages yeah, of this, yeah. You know, people have their horse yeah. in this race. I am not going to fall out with any of my people because the more we do that, the worse it is for us as a people. Very unwisely for us to attack each other. Yeah, that, you know, I agree. And, you know, I do feel some kind of way about having to tell the truth about uh, Dr. Wilson, but I have to say it. No, I mean, I you think know, expressing yourself... Yeah. Uh, you get you get credit, yeah. even though some people would say, wow, that was yeah. really strong because fake fraud and yeah. evil. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? But if he, wherever, whatever happened, it really hurts you. Yeah. It really it yeah. really bother you to the extent where you really uh, feel a certain way. Yeah. Would you get in a room with him to to talk about that? Of to course him. I would. I mean, I believe in uh, forgiveness. I believe in reconciliation. And so without a doubt, in fact, I've I've tried to talk to him several times. I've tried to talk to Dr. Wilson even before I consider running to give him a, a pathway to help black people and to help people with um, with criminal records. The, so what frustrated him? You feel you think what frustrated him? It's one thing to say, you know, you know, to give a speech and say, get out the race. You ain't got no money. Right. But uh, something else in terms of um, feeling a certain way about credibility, you know, because people know uh, LaShawn K. Ford have done yes. a lot as it relates to ex-offenders and they're there. There's community activists. They don't mess with nobody. Right. There's some community activists that we know that they don't mess with. They they really admire you. Yeah. You know, I don't care how much money Dr. Wilson put out. It can never amount to the work we've done to help people in this state. Never. And what we've been able to do that God has allowed us to do has really impacted families and changed lives. I mean, we help fathers get their driver's license back because the state is so... Um, messed up where they're suspending people license because they can't um, um, pay their child support. We have gotten hundreds of people their driver's license back. We have changed the way the child support system work. We've been fighting for men to get equal time with their kids. I mean, we do the things that are meaningful to um, families. That's the type of work we do. Can you, so there are people listening and they'll be listening via iHeartRadio, YouTube, Facebook Live, we was on Instagram, etc. Why should people support you? You know, I think people should support our campaign because our campaign is not about me. And that's what I know about every campaign right now. Every campaign that's trying to run for mayor, it's about them. We will have a city that's open and that will work for everybody. Everyone will have a seat at the table. If you're organized and ready to to make Chicago better, that's what this campaign and our administration to be about. You're not going to have to protest City Hall to get a, a, a seat at the table. If you are strongly feeling that something should happen in the city of Chicago, we welcome you. That's that's over. So have you gone into other communities that you need their support in order to win for mayor? White communities like you've gone into, say, Mount Greenwood 
or Pilsen or, you know, areas yeah. that are dominantly, you know, other than black people. Have you gone into, uh, 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 say, one of the representatives have brought you in that supports you, a white person? Well, of course, you know, uh, once again, Mike Madigan has brought me in his area and got petitions. So I was very happy that he's got me down there in the South part. Oh, your, of, your petition's being challenged, right? They're being challenged by Willie and Wilson. Then, and then you are challenging. I'm not challenging anyone. Someone, but someone worked with you, Ricky Hendon. Ricky Hendon and is Ricky. challenging someone, right? He, Dr. Wilson is challenging my petition. Okay. I thought Ricky had challenged some folks. Yeah. Ricky, um, he, he's working for Dr. Wilson. Okay. Okay, he's so not he's with the, you. He's, no, Ricky is against me. Oh, oh yes, Ricky Slick is, Willie Ricky, is against Ricky you. Ricky is with <laughs> Dr. Wilson. That's Slick how it makes his Willie. Way. I thought he was out of politics. No, he's very much so into politics. But man. he had a a senior role down in Springfield. He was he was a very. I got to tell you, Ricky Hendon. So why he was leave? a powerful? Why he leave? Sen- you know, I don't know why he left, but he okay. gave up a very very good. Leadership role, yes. and he used to bring home money. Ricky Hendon knew how to bring the money. So why would you leave a spot like that if you know how to bring home? Did they force him out? You think? You know I, that's never been um, understood, but I think that he was ready to retire. I, I tell you one thing. I gotta say this, and you appreciate it, and you probably would laugh about what I'm getting ready to say in your car, and. Um, I don't know if it's a laughing matter, but it is. You can laugh, but you had not take it serious. Uh, it's so many. You don't know who the hell is wearing a wire. Right. I tell you. I'm just they, saying. You know, the word is you have you, to treat everybody like they're yeah, wearing a wire. You got it. Damn. That's Say every. It you know, you got to treat everybody <laughs> like they're wearing a the wire. You know, and I got to tell well, you. Well, I had to put that out there because it look. Look, I'm going to say something, brother LaShawn. We all got to die. We don't know when at a point in time. We can't be afraid. We got to believe that there's a God that backs us. You know, the new black leadership members, many of us have been out here a long, long time, not to get recognition, any of that. But you put your life on the line when you believe in a cause bigger than yourself. So a bunch of people are frustrated because we got too many people sell our people out. That's right. And they fake like they really love black people or they so into our people and they go behind closed doors. Even some of the activists, so-called activists, they playing games. Mm -hmm. But what do you say to but I guess the wise thing, I think you got a quote out there right now. When you talk to people, you speak as though they all wearing white. They all wear smart as you know, hell, It's like you tell <laughs> you tell young guys that that might be promiscuous out there. You have to make sure you wear condoms because you have to assume that you're gonna have sex and that person might have something. It's the same thing with um, talking to people. <laughs> That's a hell of an analogy. Had make sure that, <laughs> had to make sure I plug that safe sex is important. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I tell you, I I I do believe that we. But all, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. very serious, and both are very serious because when it comes to the lifeblood of our community, we hurting. Yeah, so much so, and we have to be unapologetic about what it is that our community needs and deserves, and stop begging. And just take it, man. You know, take it's, it. It's not about hope anymore. It's about demanding. You know, we can no longer live on hope, hope, hope. Oh yeah, and 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 our people are still being hoodwinked by hope speeches. Right. And Barack, he really played on our people. I know that's some certain, certain people guy, but our people can do a damn thing with a speech. We, look, that symbolic stuff sound good and historical and give young black children false hope in my opinion but in some respects it's good for them to see role models but to be realistic about what we need to do economically as a people yeah not just to be in an office but to be on the ground 
and you know, this campaign and the, our mayoral um, administration would be about making sure that white people realize and brown people realize that the only way their lives are going to be the best is to make sure that we all work together. It's amazing how we have this divide of poor people. Because you're white, you may think that you're better than blacks. Because you're black and you have a little money, you may think you're better than white. But really, we all are on the brink of something that's not good. We have to come together and defeat the evil. And that evil is the the um, corruption of the city of Chicago, the traditional um, way. Yeah, we we got we got so much that we fight <coughs> against. We dealing with white supremacy, yeah. white privilege. Yeah. Then we dealing with a bunch of narcissistic elitists who really swear to God that they better than their own people. Right. So we got people out there that claim to be representing us, yeah. but they just cutting deals to get a little dough yeah. and the people continue to suffer. That's got to stop. It's got to stop. And I'm telling you, if blacks, whites, and browns come together according to the social economic status, Chicago would be better. We, we could no longer allow. I mean, you have people making... $30,000 a year hating the opposite race. How could you hate me when you are making 30, I'm making 30? What if we came together and fought together to make sure that we're able to get contracts that we've never been able to get? There are nice, the, the unions are filled with white people, but they're filled with what you call nepotism of whites. And so there are a lot of whites, but and very few blacks because we haven't been allowed into the trades, but whites got to realize that just think about it. A lot of whites have been left out too. And the ones that's in the trades are traditional families. Oh, absolutely. And so why are you being left out as a white person? You should be joining the forces with the blacks and say, we got to get a new era of people in these trades. And so when we get the blacks and the whites and the browns coming together based on the fact that we've been left out, now we're on the path for something better. And we're going to destroy the old way of doing things. Yeah, I've never heard someone sound so, I mean, honestly, humble. I mean, you don't come across as a cocky individual mm -hmm. at all. Trust me, I, I, I've been really, really uh blessed to just listen mm -hmm. and look observe and feel the energy mm -hmm. i think there are some people uh have more respect for you because you say how you feel you know and 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 that's very important mm -hmm. so we got like two minutes left is there anything else that you we missed that you feel i think you've said a lot brother but uh, is there anything else that well, you would like to say as a person who's running for this office <coughs> and, and just say it, you know, people don't like to say that, but I think let's be realistic. If it goes this way, it goes that way. And if you're not, how will it make you stronger to me mm -hmm. in terms of how you approach politics altogether? Well, this campaign will definitely put the issues on the table and the people will have a choice in this election of whether they want to vote for someone that's traditional in government or vote for someone that's in a state that they're going to move people from poverty per to prosperity. Man, thank you so very much, brother LaShawn, Representative LaShawn K. Ford. You, I mean, we really thank you for coming in there. Yes, sir. How can people reach you they can reach if they us want to support the campaign? FordForChicago.com. FordForChicago.com. That's the place to go. You can email us and sign up. Do you have an office they come to? We have an office, 5850 West North Avenue. 5850 West North Avenue and FordForChicago.com. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Mom. Appreciate you. Thank you yes, sir. Thank you all for tuning in. And uh, we'll be back uh, next week. Peace. I'm glad I was